Box Inking Media and Association with Box Row. Callum Smith, for the last few months I've been reading online, what's happened to Callum Smith? Where is he? I found you in New York. Yeah, 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 obviously support me brother. Um, but no, uh, I'm good. I'm always, I'm always in the gym, I'm always taking over. Just waiting to, for some fight news, which you know, hopefully should be any time now. It's just little postponements, things not coming off and getting put back a little bit. But you know, I'm, I've always been in the gym. I'm always taking over, always staying ready. But you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to come back on to you. Your brother Liam Smith, massive fight for him. Jesse Vargas, a big name in the US, but Jesse's been inactive. What are the chances your brother's got in this fight? Do you think? Yeah, good, really good. It's a fight Liam's been calling for for a while. Vargas, obviously, a very good fighter. Um, he's a good name in the sport as well, so it, it, it's a good fight stylistically, it should make for a good fight. I think the inactivity could, could play a part in it, being out the ring for, for I think it's two years, near enough for around two years, and to come back into a fight against someone like Liam, who will know, make him work for you know, every minute of every round, I think it, it's going to be a tough ask, but it's a tough ask for Liam, so he's a, he's a two-time world champion, but I guess it's, I think on paper it should be a very good fight, but a fight that... No, as a team, we're, we're very confident that Liam can come through and, and move on to bigger and better things. Size difference. Jesse's been a super lightweight for most of his career. Your brother's fought a super welterweight for most of his career. Do you think that'll be a key factor? Because the bookies have got Liam as a favourite. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think frame-wise, Vargas is not small, but in terms of you no know, natural body weight, you'd say, but being a, a light welterweight and a welterweight, Liam's a good, strong light middleweight. I think that, you know, as the longer the fight goes on, that could play a part in, in natural size at the weight, but. No, he's got ability, he's a good fighter and no, Liam's no, got full respect for him and he's took him serious and I think we'll see a good performance from Liam. I think we'll need to see a good performance from Liam to win but no, Liam's no, gaining good momentum, he's coming off a good win, his last fight, a good performance and there's a lot at stake for the winner, there's no, a lot to lose for the loser so it's a big fight for both of them in terms of where they're at in the career. I think they both want to fight for the world title again and hopefully win it and no, I think the winner puts themselves in a very good position for that. Jesse's been here with some great fighters, some big names like Pacquiao, Bradley, but no one's ever stopped him. Can your brother do it? I think so, yeah. I know that's not saying you know, he's a bigger or a bit bigger puncher or a better fighter than Pacquiao, Bradley. I just think timing. I think, as I say, with the inactivity and the, the stage of which the career is the boat at, I just think if Liam gets into a men momentum and drags him into his type of fight later on, he could get rid of him. But I don't think he's going to go out and look for it. He doesn't claim to be a one-punch knockout. He sort of has volume and, and chips away as the fight goes on and I think there'll be, there'll be tough moments in the fight for Vargas and you know, maybe Liam could get rid of him later on. Sam, let's move on to yourself, uh, Callum. It's been seven months, I think, eight months since your last fought. Obviously, you've had your comeback fight since Canelo. You're a great fighter, that, you know, people love talking about you. What's going on? Yeah, it's, look, it's not my fault. I think when people look at me in activity, I, I look like I'm one of them fighters who fights and then goes off the rails for a few months and I'm not. I'm, I you know, live quite a boring life and quiet. I'm always in and around the gym. I think it's just the the position that I'm in, the stage of my career. You no, know, I, I want big fights. I want to fight for the world title again. And there's only you no know, certain certain shows that that I could be on and stuff. And it's just getting fights over the line. It's not as easy to make fights. Like I say, the position I'm in. So it's just you know, I've sit down. I've got a very good team around me, and I'm hoping to get some fight news pretty soon. And a little bit. I've been out the ring a lot longer than what what I'd have liked. But you no know, boxing isn't always. A straight forward and it's been frustrating. I've been waiting. No, I, I got I got told to aim for April. I was in the gym aiming to fight in April and then it become May, June. And now I'm probably looking like July time. So it, it's frustrating and I've always felt I'm at my best when I'm active and I'm having to deal with I say I come back with a good win after the Canelo loss and then was hoping to build, build momentum and go into you know, another fight and then maybe a world title shot and now it seems that I'm back to Getting back in the ring after the long layoff, but no, I always I feel I deal with it well. I don't, I don't suffer too much from from ring rust. I always seem to perform pretty well, to, regardless of how long I've been out the ring. So no, I'm looking forward to getting back in and getting back in in a big fight, hopefully, and no, push on and the goal is to be a two eight world champion. And no, I definitely believe I can achieve it. Your promotional situation is still with Eddie, and I'm guessing Eddie, you've been speaking to him regarding these fights falling through. Yeah, I've been speaking to him. I'll, I'll speak to him this week a little bit more face to face. But yeah. I, no, I'm, I've, I've had a lot of my fights with Matchroom and you know, I'll sit down with them and see what, what they can offer and I'm hoping to get a fight sorted pretty soon so I can say get something to, to fully focus on. I'm in the gym, but in the gym ticking over and in the gym with a fight date's a little bit different and you know, I'm, I'm ready to, to step it up and say get my teeth into to the good fight, hopefully. 
Yeah, like you said, I think in a position where I can't see many light heavyweights wanting to fight you unless they're getting paid daft money, especially considering what he did to your last opponent. Um, just moving on, last thing, I can't let you go without speaking about Tyson Fury, Dillian White. What, what did you make of the whole event? The event was unbelievable. I know I've said it for years, you know, especially with Anthony Joshua as well, you know, to see, see boxing on the biggest stage possible at Wembley Stadium and so many people. It, it's good for, you know, it's not just good for them, it's good for everyone filtering down in boxing on the lower level. It's just... It's good that other fighters are getting the opportunity to fight on them shows and getting that many eyes on on, on the sport. And to see two Brits do it, it, it was great to see. And in terms of the fight, I just think I felt a bit sorry for White because it wasn't like he was doing a lot wrong. He just wasn't big enough or quick enough to close the space down. Fiori's just so big. I don't think people realise how big he is until you know, they probably they actually get in with him. White's not a small heavyweight. He's a decent size. And he was just too, too small. And I think he needed a little bit more explosiveness to close the gap down and he, he, he didn't quite have it but in terms of Fiori he just seems to be, be getting better and better I think he's enjoying his boxing and he put in a good performance I thought he boxed well early on and then got the knockout which earlier on in his career he hasn't quite produced he's always been a, no, a good boxer but hasn't really seemed to be getting no, a one punch knockout but he seems to be, be bringing excitement to his last couple of performances and say at, the, at the minute he's the man to beat he's the number one everywhere in the world and, and rightly so I, he's saying he's retired and I don't think he will I'd like to see him fight the winner of Joshua Yusuf and hopefully get you know, a certain number one in the world, an undisputed world champion. But the heavyweight division is very good at the minute and we're lucky to have two Brits at the very top. Last one, does anyone in this era beat Tyson Fury? They can do, yeah, definitely. I think you know, Deontay Wilder was probably a couple of seconds from beating him and although you know, he'd come back and beat him. In the, even in the last fight he had moments, Wilder, he was close to getting rid of him. It, it, at heavyweight, I don't think there's, there's such thing as unbeatable, but no, at the minute he's definitely the number one in the world and I don't think there's many who stand a good chance of beating him, but I think ability-wise, Yusuf could, but I don't think, is he big enough? I don't know. And I think the best show is probably Joshua, because I think Joshua, what we said, Dillian White lacked is in the speed to close the gap down. I do think Joshua has got that, but stylistically, Joshua's got a very tough fight in Yusuf first. We might never see that fight, so it's just, it's different styles make fights and I think Joshua has got a good chance of beating him, but no, at the minute, I think Fiori undoubtedly is the number one and deservedly so. Sound, Callum, cheers for your time and I look forward to seeing you back in the ring. Thank you very much, mate.